Hi, I'm Jack Cush uh, from the Baylor Research Institute in Dallas, Texas, and I want to talk to you about uh, what happens after a patient fails a TNF inhibitor and the data that was seen from the ROOM data uh, prospective registry in Canada. This data was presented at the ACR 2015 meeting. Uh, it was abstract 488. Uh, and an interesting trial, the ROOM data uh, is a registry in Canada, throughout Canada, a number of centers. Uh, and it looks at a number of treatment options and, and behaviors. In this spe specific analysis, they looked at 231 patients who failed either their first or second TNF inhibitor and were then switched to um, uh, either a TNF inhibitor or um, a rituximab. Uh, and they look at retention on therapy as uh, a measure of success. So overall, you can see in the bottom left-hand graph that those who were switched to uh, rituximab did far better than those that were switched to a TNF inhibitor. At the end of uh, eight years, only 19% of people are on rituximab uh, versus those on rituximab, it's over 80% were retained. Um, and then after a second TNF inhibitor failure, the results were still in favor of rituximab, although the differences were not quite as dramatic. It was 54% versus 37% in data not shown. On the right, you can see a, a graphic of the same uh, uh, one on the left, but in this case, we're looking at patients who are seropositive and more or less showing the same outcome. So I'm not sure that that factored into the outcomes, but it clearly seems that, uh, uh, that the use of rituximab um, may be a smart option for those who have failed either a first or a second TNF inhibitor. That's it. Tune in for more videos here at T-Ray.